Welcome back everybody to another bogey tip. This time we're talking about shot placement and the use of shooting sticks, whether they be the traditional tripod style shooting sticks or the now new quad sticks. Stay tuned, find out all about the quad sticks. How you going everybody? Paul Bogue back with another bogey tip. This time I want to talk a little bit about shot placement and the taking the right shot on your animal. Now, it's something sort of often overlooked but something I get a lot of questions about. Is where to play, where should I place the shot on the animal? And then what to do after you've shot the animal? Well, practice is one of the main things we sort of need to do. And unfortunately, going to the range, sitting at a bench, getting tight groups is what people think practicing with their firearms all about, but um, groups don't kill deer, one good shot kills a deer. So it's more about trying to get practice out in the field. I know that's hard for a lot of people because you can't get out in the field and there's sort of not places that you can get out and take shots sort of readily. So being able to practice and take advantage of any sort of situations you can is what we're looking for. Shot placement on the animal is fairly simple when you're talking something the size of a samba. They've got a kill zone, it's, it's this big, it's a dinner plate size area on their shoulders, all you want. Don't have to be too fancy, don't worry about neck shots or head shots. They're high risk, high reward kind of areas. If you just miss the spine on a neck shot, you kind of end up with nothing. The deer might drop, be knocked out, but then it tends to get up and run away because you actually haven't done any real damage. Just the shock of the impact has knocked the animal out temporarily, and then they run away, so you tend to lose them. Head shots are much the same. Side of that head, you've only got a small brain cavity this big. Everything inside that big giant head of a samba is they've any no real value to when you're trying to shoot them in the head unless you hit that brain so you got to make sure that that's going to be a really really good shot but i would recommend it don't even take the headshot at all just hit him in the shoulder put, put one in the engine room take out heart lungs or liver you've got lots of bone fragments that can happen in there as well shoulder blades your scapula there you've got your ribs in front of it all that bone fragment can help take out and do more damage on its way through when the bullet goes through but a hole in the lungs or the liver or the heart is going to kill that animal it's not going to live, it's going to bleed out, it's going to die from that, from that trauma. So a nice chest shot, then giving the animal that, that 15 minute period to just run away, sit down and pass away, is what we're after. So then it becomes backed up, making sure that's what capable of your shooting skills are. On a sandbar, I tell most people, whatever distance you can confidently, consistently hit a 6 inch target, that's the, that's the distance and that's your range on a sandbar. So if you can get paper plate and normally the inner circle part of the paper plate the flat section on the bottom is around about a six inch diameter if you can sit that down the range and you can consistently put shots into that that's the area you want to be shooting and not off a bench it's not about trying to get tight groups once your gun can get a tight group it's not about shooting tight groups it's about actually shooting in a real life situation that's where my shooting course comes into it is getting people in the field and shooting actually in the field now in a previous video we've explained and talked through using your firearm and getting comfortable with your firearm. So I won't go too much into being that, but I'll just show you that no magazine, not even a bolt in it. So for the purpose of uh, explaining and showing you this, it's very safe at the moment. But techniques are people, standard techniques, we've got to get used to being able to freehand. Being able to hold a firearm up and consistently and shoot freehand is something that becomes a lot of practice. And it's a skill that most Samba hunters you kind of want to have because that bush we're hunting, and as you can see behind me, is often bracken, fern and blackberries and bushes that are low down. So the ability to kneel down, lay down, take a prone shot off bipods in Samba country is uh, not that often. So most of the time it's a freehand standing shot or you might be able to get down and do a kneeling shot. So I'll show you how a couple of different versions of how we shoot off our, off our knees as well. But I'll start with standing up freehand. Is we're going to have our hand at the forehand and that's where I like most comfortly. And it's standing, making sure you're standing up straight and I slightly lean into it, making sure the firearm is tucked into my shoulder well, allow me to absorb the recoil. The other way I see people do it, it's not always my most comfortable, is you're having your hand closer back in and tucking your elbow in and back here. With a light gun like this light sour, it's not so bad. You can actually tuck it in like this and you can shoot that way. 
I still prefer the arm out, but with that extended arm, you get more wobble without practice. That's why people like that tucking the elbow in. If I turn slightly this way, they tuck the elbow in. You get the arm in here and get your grip there and there. You've got a nice triangular shape here, which makes you normally steadier. But if you have a heavier firearm, you'll find that the, the, the heavy end of the forend will want to drag you down. So I tend to shoot that style, but plenty of people don't mind this way as well. Another, another style we can actually try is the kneeling down version. It works a fair bit of time in Samba country, but depending on where you are and the level of actual vegetation is whether you can get away with that. Rightio, for a sitting or kneeling down sort of position, I often like to sit down, like sit on actually one of my, one of my legs, have my knee in front of me and my elbow on the knee, and I sit in like that. I find that one of the most comfortable ways that I, I shoot kneeling down. Elbow tucked on there, Still done with those three points of contact on the firearm, making it as stable as we can. And I sit in like that. Still allows me to swing. Allows me to sort of higher or lower down by changing where my hand is at the forehand. But that's my most comfortable way. I have plenty of people that can't tuck their leg in so bad, so they end up sitting on both knees and preferring that way. Giving them elbows on both of their knees. And shooting in that sort of manner. Like I said, they're both comfortable ways of shooting in the field. If you've watched any of my videos, you'll probably see that many of my customers shoot deer off my tripods. Just standard three leg tripod. Cam locks on the side, extends the legs down, out they come. Great way to shoot deer. That V support at the front makes it a lot easier. Problem being is that if you want the shorter ones that are easy to sort of carry around like I do, they're quite low. So I can't actually shoot too much in the high position. But I get a lot of positions where I can shoot across the gully with customer for longer range stuff, extend the legs out, and we can sit down and kneel down. So they come to that height. So they don't become quite handy at shooting at, at height standing there. Now you can get taller tripod ones, but these are the ones that I mainly use. And if, like I said, if you've watched my videos, you'll have seen a lot of customers shoot off these. They're much better and much more stable than shooting just freehand. I'll show you how they work. We'll kneel down and show you that. Rightio. So this is the basic sort of configuration I get out of my ones. And to be the same degree, I could be standing with a taller set, there'd be much the same sort of setup. Is that the, the forehand rests here on your V, and it gives you that support there, which you can put your hand underneath, wrap it round, and hold it normally, and then put your hand on the scope to pull the weight in to hold it there. Now it still gives you the flexibility to swing, to change the angles up and down, and shoot off them. They're a great aid, and being small and lightweight, they're very good. For carrying around and I have carried them for many years. Many customers have, have shot off these while we walk around the bush. Normally when I start looking cross gully shooting that, that 150 to 200 meters definitely bring out the shooting sticks and allow the customers to take that that more steadier shot. If it's something you have or something you're looking at getting definitely have to get it and then put the practice in. So you basically want the firearm in a position you would be naturally shooting that's where you'll get the best results. So if I if I shoulder the rifle as if I was to shoot it freehand this is where it is here, and that's the level I need the sticks at. So if you see there, I put it, I'm at that level. So that's where, when I go here, the gun naturally fits where it should be holding it freehand, and it tends to make it the steadiest. You don't want to set your tripod up and go, all right, tripod set, and then put your gun on it, and then try and make yourself comfortable behind the gun. The trick is always to make you comfortable, bring the tripod to you, it's a shooting aid. So it's not a shooting rest, it's a shooting aid. It's there to aid your shooting abilities. So you get yourself comfortable first, then bring them up to where you are. That's the most thing I see go wrong with people is they try to set the tripods up, then they put themselves in a position to shoot off them rather than the other way around. Get comfortable, be in the right position, look where the deer is and go, okay, that's the level, I need these higher. I put them there, and that's the level I need to be at. I'm comfortable, gun is rested on there, and we're right to go. That will make for much better shooting, shooting off shooting sticks. Still the problem comes with that single point here axis allowing you back here. So from that I've managed to find myself sort of a bit newer technology that I've only just gotten onto and they're a different set of set of shooting sticks than the standard tripod or bipod shooting sticks and the one that probably shoot more deer off nowadays and recommend more than anything else. I'll grab them and I'll give you a look at. These are the Viperflex shooting sticks. A couple of different varieties which we'll go through. These ones I've got here are the Journeys. Now I'll explain the difference in the two. We've got the Journey and we've got the Elite. We'll go through that shortly and I'll explain the difference. But first I'll introduce you to what they are. They're not the standard sort of shooting sticks where you've got 
bipods or the tripod three sticks. These are quad, four sticks. So it actually supports the, the, the stock of your firearm and the forend, giving you much greater support. They can be used multiple ways, not just that way. They're not very heavy. I know they're tall and look like a lot more to carry around, but they're not very heavy. They weigh just over a kilo, so they're quite light to carry around, but you can also use them as a bit of a walking stick as you walk through the forest. They, they're actually quite strong. They're not, they're, they won't bend or flex. So the setup with them, as we look at them, the forend here is quite wide, allowing you lots of angle to change if an animal is moving. The rear of it, for, your, for the butt of your rifle, is a bit narrow, but it's still wide enough to fit most rifles in it and allows you to move. Gives that little bit of flexibility. People want to know what that little handle here is for. That's for one-handed access to be able to grab them and move them apart. That handle makes it one hand, and then out it comes, sit your firearm on it. So once you get your firearm on, place on, place on, and then we're very stable once we're up here. Like I said, the fore end there, it's quite wide, allows you to move, but it's rubbery grip, so it actually holds on to your firearm. Doesn't mean your arm wants to slip around on it. That rubber grip on there allows it to grip on properly, but still allows you to move it. One here on the back end of the stock, you can have it here just behind your, your trigger, the actual handle here, or you can bring it right back, you can place it anywhere you want. Now, where they really come in their own is the way you can shoot off them. So, we can shoot off them as a single pole. So, have them there, shoot off them, just as a standard monopole. The next step we can do is actually spread the legs, and make them like a, a bipod, and shoot them off as a bipod. But where they really come in their own is the ability to use them as quad poles. Now, you can change the height by bringing the legs in, or spreading the legs out. We'll change the height dramatically. The whole idea is to set it up to yourself to first start with, and how I like to set the height up, is basically have them set up that they're behind my chin. Height of my chin allows me to use them always. So it's just walking along and you see it here quickly and you just want the quick single pole there, it's the right height. But it also means that once you actually open them up and spread the legs, they're about the right height. If I bring my left leg in close here, be right, it'll be the opposite leg if you were left-handed. Place the firearm on there. That gives me the perfect height. The way we change height on these, it's as simple as pressing these, these buttons on the side and sliding them together. We see that one of the legs here will have numbers down the bottom here and it has letters up the top. So they have a set of letters and a set of numbers so you can adjust it so you know what height works for you. I have it on B4 is my height. So I know every time I get them out and set them up, if they're on B4, they're the height that I need them. Like I said, it's just simple pressing the buttons in and, and sliding and pulling them in and out. We push the buttons in, the legs slide, if you give them a slight twist, they don't line up with the next hole, then I'll allow you to put them back. And then you put them back up, and I'll get a little click when they're in position. I'll look here for the... Got to make sure they're level with the other legs. And you'll see just here, a bit hard to see, click, out comes a little pin, and they're locked in. And that's the right height. That's how you adjust it. So they adjust height-wise up and down. But they also spread quite wide. So they allow you to shoot kneeling down, even sitting down, by spreading the legs. These are the second generations of the Viper Flexi brought it, and these were known as the go low. So they gave the ability to spread the legs to get down low. The original ones never had that. Change the height of the legs. The legs are still as high as they were. They're still set up on my, my level, but I can spread the legs out quite wide, get the feet to grab in, and, and open them up like that. They still work quite the same as the shooting stick down this low. So here I am sitting on the ground, and they're working very well for me down here. Down level, down low, I probably even get a bit lower if I needed to get under some bushes to shoot a bit, a bit lower. You just get him in position, make sure the legs grip on the ground, and he's actually made, we've actually got some very good designed feet on them nowadays. So you've got the spike on here that helps us grip into the ground so that low down angle grips in and holds on tight. We can do it from a kneeling position, so I can still be on my knees kneeling here, or standing or sitting down. It gives us the whole range of where to shoot. But with Sam, but the most important one is that standing position to shoot over that low-lying scrub. Now, I can change angles. I can shoot downhill. I can spread the legs to shoot down a steep hill. I can actually rock back and shoot up a hill as well. So it gives me all them options. But being that it's held at the fore, the fore end and the rear, it actually is very stable. If you bring both legs in together, if you know the animals are moving through and you're in an area that you might be having animals moving through reasonably quick, you can actually use them like that too. Just with the legs together, it gives you much room to swing. 
I still prefer the four legs out because it's much more stable and then just pivot as you go. Just pivoting, lifting one leg slightly and just swinging around and then putting it back down going that's where I need the shot and allowing it. Samba are not normally running through the forest unless you're doing a flush hunt or a driven hunt or you're using with hounds. So more often than not they're stopping and starting so you can just literally quietly and it makes no noise to do that. Lift it, move it around. You can walk the legs wherever you want to. As you're going, you can swap angles without having to actually change and pick the sticks back up and then you've moved and swapped the angles and put them back up again. You can pick them up and carry them. And then place them and go, yep. But the flexibility that gives you and the actual how accurate you'll be able to shoot shooting off the quad sticks will change the way you hunt. You'll be taking shots you didn't think you'd normally take and you'll be more confident in taking them. One of the side effects that's actually probably a good side effect is actually getting them out and setting them up slows most people down and they tend to take a better shot rather than lifting it and shooting freehand where I find a lot of people rush it because they're too worried about holding on to fatigue of holding on to the gun, not being confident. These actually make you slow down by the fact you've got to get them out and set them up. But then when you are on them, you're so steady and confident that you take a quite, a quite a good shot. Rightio, here is the two styles we have. On my left here is the, uh, is the Journey, which are named that because they're designed to pull apart into three segments, bending this small carbon fiber section in the center here, comes apart, the, the bottom end and the top ends pull apart, and that's our longest section, designed to be able to travel. Can fit in a backpack, can fit in a suitcase, you can carry it, you can travel, you can transport it. Comes with a small bag to place it in as well, meaning it's travel. That's where it gets its name, Journey. And these are the originals which were called the Elite. They work much the same, they spread out, they do it all the same, they just don't pull apart. They only go short enough by pushing in the buttons, give them a little twist, they're not quite there, we'll give them a twist, extend them up, and that's as short as we can make it there. Which is quite short enough that we can actually place them into a gun bag. So they pack up as short as that. That's how small we get them, which was roughly about 11, 1200. They will fit in your gun bag with your gun and they can travel that way. They're all aluminium, so they're not, these ones here are aluminium and carbon fiber. These ones are all aluminium. The heads, the top, the main part, the feet on the bottom, all exactly the same. It's just the actual main, uh, main legs that change between the two models. Meaning this one doesn't pull apart and go as small, and this one does. These ones, being that they're not carbon fibre, are, are probably about 100 or 200 grams heavier than the carbon fibre one. That is about the only difference. So I'll give you a bit of a look at how this one pulls apart as well. So we push the buttons in. Pull it apart. Legs come off. Comes apart. So it packs up into smaller sections like that. Right here, so this is the main difference. In here is our journeys. Our journeys pack up into this small bag, and they come with this bag, packed up, placed in there, easy for travel and moving around. Like I said, if you're not too much into traveling and trying to get them in suitcases, this is where I carry my Elite. In here, in my gun bag, sitting with my gun. Fits in there fine, manage to pack up, travel in there, on the destination to and from, then when you get there, it's just simple as extending the legs to the height you want it to. Like I said, they come with their, their lettering so you know what height to go back to and set them up to you ready to go. An optional extra add-on we can get for these is what they call the fifth leg or the extra leg here. Quite simple, it's the leg here, it actually just clips on. Clips on the front here. And what it does is it gives us that fifth leg out the front, makes it more stable. You have it slightly rotated to the side, you don't even notice it until you're ready to set up. Then you can swing it forward, set it out here place it out there. What that allows is that now we can actually set it up, sit them out here, put the leg out, freestanding holding my firearm there. They don't going to go anywhere. You want to make sure it's set up properly before you, you sit some of your expensive glass on top and watch it tumble to the ground, but they are very stable. So you can have it if you've got a position that you know that you do a lot of sitting and waiting, whether it be off a wallow or the back of the paddock where deer might be walking out feeding. You can have it set up waiting while you sit there glassing, waiting for the deer. So you're not making big movements when it's all started to happen. The gun is already sort of roughly in the position, sitting there and you're waiting and then you just grab the firearm and you shoot the animal when they come out as needed. Or for the, for the people that want to just use them to extend their distance out even further, that extra stable leg out the front here allows you to really push down and lean in it, giving you a bit more stability 
and making it even more accurate at greater distances like your three, four, five hundred meter shots off these sticks as possible with that extra leg allowing that extra extra point of contact to the ground making that even more stable at the front there. I don't tend to use it very often but I have had it set up with customers when we have been sitting and we know the deer are going to come feeding out a particular area and we've set the gun up sitting there waiting waiting on the edge there we'll sit back in the bushes a little bit further behind it sit there glassing on, on the ground and when the deer comes out we know all he's got to do is stand up quietly behind his firearm and then we're ready to go stops us moving the firearm up and around and making a lot of movement because it's already ready to go you notice if you buy these viperflex they'll come with these covers now a complaint that obviously started when they first brought the set out was these holes here get a whistle to them the air will whistle through them and make noise so they've decided to make a set of covers that clip over clip over there blocking all the holes and eliminating that that whistling sound now you can cut and change them to suit so you can, you can cut it in half and allow it that the only hole available is the one where you set it up to shoot off so you can cut it in half cover these bottom holes cover these top holes and leave just that so when you put them together it's easy you place them in they go automatically back to the position you wanted and the rest are all covered not allowing for the wind to whistle through making a noise i haven't used the covers and i haven't found them really actually making too much whistling sound in the bush at all I suppose it's just the style of the sandbar hunting we do here we're not out in in open fields and paddocks and and flat ground a lot of the time where there is a lot of wind but if you decide you want to use these for for hunting fallow or out fox shooting they're a great aid and you might find they get a whistle that's what these covers will do they'll cover the, the holes and stop the whistling sound another thing that i've come across that works quite well i mentioned like uh, they're designed for for being a shooting aid to shoot off they work great as a set of walking sticks to help us walk through the forest but one thing i find that works really well is if we're doing longer time periods of, of sitting off binos you rest your binos on there and glassing they work great for glassing off find a lot of, lot of, lot of my customers because they're not hunting nowhere near as much as i am the fatigue of hanging on to binoculars looking for binoculars for long periods of time takes a toll on your arms and your body these actually work quite well you can put the binos on them if you're sitting there glassing for a while and they work very well give you that extra extra aid to then balance and glass while you're walking through the forest. Just another thing that I've found that definitely helps. Just another way of utilizing the equipment. As with all Samba hunting, when we're walking through the forest, I like things to have multiple jobs, so I carry only the important stuff with me and not carrying everything, because once I actually get the animal, I've got to carry the animal out, and as we all know, Samba are very heavy, so I want to carry the minimum in to carry the maximum out. So tools like this to become multiple purpose, shooting sticks, walking sticks, and good bino rest are the sort of things that I'm always looking for. She didn't move, she did. She didn't move, she just fell over. She didn't move, she did. That was great shooting. Good old shooting sticks help. Yep. Well, whenever you're ready. Now, if you're looking for any more information on these shooting sticks or you'd like to purchase a set, you can jump on a Paul Bogues Outdoors, check them out. They're all available on there. There's something I recommend, and they're in the, the Bogey approved products. So you can jump on, check them out. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. I said before, if you've got any other tips or any questions you want to go through, send me a message and we'll try and make a video and help us out. Happy hunting, everybody.